talking about Jerusalem, how the Lord, you know, is called Jerusalem, and Jerusalem belongs to the Lord, and they're blinded Israel. Jerusalem are the same, they're, for, they're the Lord's people. It's, it's Jerusalem is the city of God, Israel is the people that live in Jerusalem. And God has called them, and they're His, and they're blinded in part, and He's coming back for them, and He's going to save them by His mercy and His grace. And, uh, and so with Israel, we've got to see all the history of Israel. We've got to see everything, you know, all, all her dirty laundry and the good and the bad and stuff because the Lord wrote it in His Word so you could read it so that you, it doesn't make you or I any better than Israel. It shows you what you're capable of. It shows you what your flesh is like. It, it, those things are written for examples for our sakes, okay, that we would know how to be in the Lord because it's not a game. It's life and death. And uh, so Israel, we're going to see how that they're going to finish up on uh, here in uh, in Zechariah chapter 14 at the end of the world the Lord says behold the day of the Lord cometh and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee for I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled and the women ravished and half of the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall be cut off from the city then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east, and the mountain of olives, and excuse me, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in, cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valleys of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. Okay, all the saints. Now, who are the saints? The saints. The Lord refers to us as the saints. The Lord refers to the children of Israel as the saints. These guys are blinded and part of the when I say the saints now I mean if you go back and read uh, Hebrews chapter or excuse me I believe it's uh, um, Hebrews 11 yeah the faith chapter at the end of that chapter says that they um, um, not being made perfect without us that is King David Isaac Jacob Israel all the the saints that were before us all the because in book of Acts it says for David is not ascended into the heavens King David all right that God hath the more perfect thing for us, that they, that is all the people before us, should not be made perfect with, without us. They're, it's all one big day, the Lord comes back, but guess where he comes to? Jerusalem, all right? So if you look in, uh, what chapter, what book is that? Um, oh, I don't remember which one it is, but it's where the Lord said that uh, he's going to make Jerusalem a cup of trembling in the hands of all nations in the last day. So we know how it's going to turn out for Israel. It's going to get real bad. It's going to get real messy. And it's going to be just a real ugly situation. But the Lord is coming back on a white horse. <laughs> and he's coming back to destroy his enemy. The blood's going to be up to the horse's bridle. But he's coming where? He's coming to Jerusalem. So to say that God's done with it, why doesn't he just come to New York City or come to Dallas, Texas, or you know, show up in China or something like that? Because he's not. He's coming to Jerusalem. Because that's where all the action's going to be in the last days. So... With that in mind, let's go back and look at Catholicism now. Okay, this is Catholicism is Satan's masterpiece, not only to take and usurp the authority that God, you know, that He put His name in His people, this people Israel, and He also put in all the Gentiles that, that His names are His His commandments and all the things that He's given us that are holy gifts of God. He's written in our hearts upon the fleshy tables of our hearts when we declare His generation. Like in Isaiah chapter 53, you know, who shall declare his generation as when his, you know, his life is taken from the earth? Who does that? Who's declaring the Lord's generation? He didn't have any children. You know, some people say that's satanic, but the Lord didn't have any. And so when he rose from the dead, who declares his generation? We do. We become born again through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he puts his Holy Spirit in us and we testify of him through the Holy Spirit, lifting up and magnifying Jesus Christ as Lord. So you got Catholicism out there that's trying to be both. She wants to be a priesthood and she wants to be the mother church, quote unquote. You know, she can only be referred to as a church in any sense of the form if you refer to it as a church of Satan. Okay? Now, and uh, if you look in Revelation chapter 17, all right, <clears throat> this is the chapter that everybody says you can't understand the book of Revelation, and I don't understand everything in the book of Revelation. But all of the things that we do understand are plainly given. You know, we can find all the definitions and everything you want to find in the Bible. 
and in the book of Revelation are in the book of Revelation. It's not outside the Bible, okay? You, to, to fix your car engine, you wouldn't try to go down to the grocery store to find the spark plugs in the milk dairy section, right? That's how it is with the Bible. Once you step outside the Bible, now you're just dealing with men, but here is the Word of God, and we look for everything in the Word of God that, to, so that the Bible defines itself, okay? Now, in Revelation 17, it says, And there was one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Okay? And we don't have a lot of time here, so I'm just going to tell you, and you can read the whole chapter yourself, that the, the many waters here is peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues. Okay? That this whore that's sitting upon many waters is Roman Catholicism, and we'll see that as we read along here. It says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What wine? They're sitting there drinking a cup of wine. No, it's spiritual fornication. You're, you're, you're drunken. You're spiritually drunk. You, you're calling this thing the mother church or you're calling it, you know, that this is the priesthood and stuff. And how come you can't see that? How come you can't go to the Vatican and see these little grave image flies that have all everything and pentagrams on temple floors and, you know, uh, all kinds of every satanic garbage that you see all the world and Satanism and Paganism and all the p p uh, excuse me, Pagan heathen tribes and stuff out in the jungles and stuff you can find in the Vatican and dead relics and everything. Why don't people snap at it? Because they're spiritually drunk. They're, they can't discern. Um, and in verse 3 it says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay. And all that's def defined in this chapter, what the seven heads and ten horns are. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And that golden cup, she got, the Lord put it in her hand, so if you want to believe a lie, that's right there. You go back in the book of Jeremiah, I think it's chapter 51 or 50, it talks about the Lord has put in her hand a golden cup full of abominations. Uh, all right, now in verse 5, and it says, And upon her forehead okay, was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Okay, Now this thing's going to be abominable, it's going to be filthy, it's going to be a harlot. Now Catholicism, for all those of you that don't know this, Catholic means universal. Okay, And that's a real big theme here in these last days, that everything's... You know, one currency, one religion, one, I mean, many Bibles, you know, but it all leads to the same place, which is hell. And uh, here we got uh, this this woman right here, and it says, and the bomb, and uh, excuse me, verse 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. She kills saints. Those people that serve the Lord Jesus Christ, those people that are true Jews that live over in Jerusalem and Israel and other parts of the world like Nazi Germany and they're killing and hacking to death the, uh, the Jews and burning them in the inferno and trying to kill them all and stuff like that and trying to prevent them from going back to Jerusalem or they end up going over there anyways and the Lord you know, reestablishes Israel back in Israel that they couldn't stop. Uh, so the Lord could fulfill His will in the last days, that uh, that those people that were running that uh, meat grinder over there were Catholics. It was a Catholic war, just like Vietnam and all these other big, huge wars out there that we, we fought, and there's been so many people that, that know that and see it, and they, they, they've tried to tell the people that you'll never hear about it, because Catholicism is truly the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and she has many daughters, and her daughters are just like Jehovah Witnesses, they bring down Jesus Christ, you've got Mormons that plead all kinds of wacky stuff, they bring down Jesus Christ. The Muslims, I don't know if you know it, but incidentally, the Muslims recognize Catholicism as the only church, okay? And the Muslims believe that Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross if Judas Iscariot did in his place. But they recognize Catholicism. Why is that? Why is that? Okay, now, um, if you look in uh, verse, uh, excuse me here, Oh, in verse 9, it says, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Okay? There's only one place in the world that sits on seven mountains, a city, where the woman sits. That's Rome. Seven mountains. Look it up. and You find, go ask any travel agent. Look in verse 18. And the woman which thou seest, sawest, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That's who Catholicism is. She's a big satanic boogeyman. Don't be deceived by her, because the Lord loves you. In Jesus' name. Amen.